Hi boys and girls. Today we are going to do a little bit of a lesson on what you're going to see this week for Unit 3, Lesson 13. You did a little work yesterday to kick off Lesson 13, and we're just going to go through some of the vocabulary and things you're going to see throughout the rest of this week. So the entire week we're going to focus on understanding sums greater than 10. And let's remember the word sums here is one of our vocabulary word, and that is the answer to an addition sentence. So when we talk about that, one plus one equals two, two is the sum, the total. Let's keep that in mind as we move forward. As we go throughout the week, we are going to figure out that there are many ways to make a teen number. Here's one way that we're gonna work on making a teen number. So let's look at the number 12. Here's a way we can make the number 12. We are going to make a row of squares. If you make a row of 12 squares, you can change them up with two different colors. So if I have my row of 12 squares here, if I color them all one color pink, I have 12 pink and zero green, 12 plus zero equals 12. But if I only wanted to color 11 of them pink, I have 11 pink, I colored one of them green, then 11 plus one equals 12. Now, if I go down to the third row here, if I colored 10 of them pink, how many did I color green? Two, 10 plus two equals 12. Now, if you look closely at this boys and girls, and if we remember when we worked with our addition table, you can probably see a pattern so look at the rows and see what patterns you see. When you're looking here at your number sentences, what patterns do you see there? My first add-in goes 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, and so on. My first add-in gets smaller by one. My second add-in, zero, one, two, three, four, gets larger by one, it increases by one. My sum is always 12 when we're looking at the partners of sum of 12 for the total of 12. This is one way we can make a T number if I wanted to do it with the number 13, I would just add another square here and I would follow the same pattern. I would start with 13 plus zero and then I would move down. My first add-in getting smaller, my second add-in getting larger. So when you take one from one color, you add it to the other color when we're coloring on our rows of squares. Make sure that you can see the patterns on this chart because remember, math is full of patterns. When you add 10 to a single digit number, boys and girls, the sum is always a teen number. So looking at our number bond, we know that a number bond looks like this. It's a whole number with two parts. It has partners. They are the parts. They work together to create the whole number. So when I add a 10 and a single digit number, a single digit number is any number between one and nine, I'm going to get a teen number. So when I add 10 and two, I'm getting 12. That's my teen number here. 10 and two ones are partners of 12. 12 is the whole number. 10 and two are my partners. I can also use my 10 frame and fill it up with my one 10 and put my extra ones in my second 10 frame. Let's review some vocabulary words. There are no new vocabulary words in this lesson, boys and girls. All of them we have been introduced to before. Ones, 
Those are single digits. Ones. Those are single units or objects. So my ones here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight ones. Eight. In the number 18, eight is the ones number. T number, a 10 and some number of ones from one to nine. The numbers 11 to 19 are teen numbers. Tens, group of 10 ones. When we stack 10 single units together, we get one 10. In my number 43, I have one, two, three, four tens. A 10 is a group of 10 ones. My addend are the two numbers being added. So seven plus five, seven and five are the addends. Total, four plus eight equals 12. 12 is the total. A number found as the result of adding is the total. We also call that the sum. Make a 10. This is the strategy that we use that combines the numbers that add to 10 when finding totals greater than 10. Seven plus five equals 12. Some of us have found it easier to make that five into two smaller numbers. So if we make that five into three plus two, we know that seven plus three is 10. And so we can take this 10 plus two and get 12. That's not the way you have to do it, but some of us have found that to be an easier way to add seven plus five. Others of us might still just grab that seven and count up five, and that's fine. The associative property we've talked about, that's when the grouping of three or more add-ins is changed, the total doesn't change. So if I'm adding two plus three plus four, or four plus two plus three, three plus four plus two, it doesn't matter what order I put those numbers in, if they're the same, they are going to equal nine every time. One of my favorite properties we've talked about, boys and girls, is the commutative property. And that's when we flip and switch. Four plus three is seven. Four plus three is the same as three plus four. Changing the order of add-ins does not change the total. That's when we flip and switch. Remember, when we use our math words, we are mathematicians. So when you need to write about your work on your math papers and share your thoughts, we wanna make sure we are using our math vocabulary. Continue working really well this week. And if you have questions, let your teachers know. Have a great day.